So welcome to Winter Engineering Update, uh, first one of 2023, so belated happy, uh, happy new year to you. So as you can see, the aeroplane is still in maintenance at the moment, lots and lots going on. Uh, so we are looking to be finishing the fuel tanks very, very soon. The lads are doing a magnificent job getting inside the tanks, taking all the components out, cleaning all the components. Um, testing everything and then putting the, all the tanks back together, which is a massive, massive job but very nearly complete. So we've had new gaskets made. Um, the tank lids, they've all been off. They've all been shot blasted. They've all been treated with selenium acid, etch prime painted, PRC. So it's like a rubberized sealant that goes on the back of the tank lid. Um, so all those hopefully next week should be fitted. Um, and then we'll have to wait until the airplane goes out to put fuel in and we'll leak test all the tanks after that. Um, the PFCU indications, we've been going through that. We found a couple of defects, um, just one tiny pin on the back of one of the sockets that go into the PFCU control panel. One of the pins was bent, it's thrown up a multitude of problems. Um, so the indications were just all over the place. Other problems we've had on the PFCUs, number two and number four PFCU have got air inside them. So there's obviously a seal that's gone on the RAM. Um, so they're off now. Um, they're being resealed they're going to go onto the test rig they'll be bled uh, and tested on the rig itself so that's why we've got it here uh, they'll be fitted and then we'll do all the range of movements on the elevons and we'll see how they go um, engine filters the fuel filters on the engines they've all been off they've all been through an ultrasonic bath and cleaned so they're all now back on so when the airplane goes out again and we've got fuel on board the filters will be bled um, and then hopefully we'll be ready for engine start which will be good um, a couple of the engine hydraulic filters on one number one engine, the pop-out indicator had popped. So a new filter has been fitted. Please report in a filter bowl. Uh, there's no debris in there, so there's no metal particles or anything like that. Or the mag plugs in the engines, um, they're like a little magnetic plug that sit in the, in the oil. So anything that passes through the engine, if you've got a bearing breaking down or you know, part of the gearbox, whatever like that, it'll pick the particles up and it'll be on the mag plug. So please report on those, nothing on those. So when we go back out and the engines are running, we'll check the hydraulic filter. I'm hoping it was just the filter. It looked old and a bit, a bit rough. Um, so once we check that when the engine's running, if the pop out hasn't popped again, brilliant. If it has, it'll be the housing. Um, other things that we're doing, um, so we're looking at the aircraft hopefully coming off jacks uh, either late this month, February or early March. So for that to happen, the liquid spring shock, shock absorbers uh, on the undercarriages, they need topping up. So you check the pressures on them uh, and they will give you the proper ride height of the aircraft. So it will look a little, bit, a little bit better. The nose undercarriage was a little bit low. So we're gonna be checking that. Um, other things that we've been doing, the air brakes, that's proved to be a real pain in the backside. Um, a couple of the rollers are seized. Uh, and we found a sprocket is slightly corroded. So that's a bit of a concern at the moment. So we're looking for parts. Um, so the guys have been working really, really hard on the air brakes. So just to give you an idea, to remove one of the bolts in the chain guard, it took a couple of weeks. It's trying to figure out how to get it out, what process to do it. You've got no space to swing a hammer or a cat. Um, so pretty much they've now found out how to do it. It's now been taken out. It's then a case of, right, do we fabricate a new one? Do we try and get another spare one? So, you know, the options are there, but we obviously need to get it done quick to get the aircraft back out and taxi in. Um, other little bits, the rudder balance bay, that's all been blown out. Um, there was tons and tons of crud in there, um, dirt for the past, I don't know, 30, 40 years that's been in there. So that's better. Um, anchor nuts are being replaced on that. The parachute bay, pleased to report the parachute bay is now working as advertised. It goes, the door goes up and down, the parachute um, hook assembly, it closes as it should. So all being well this year, you might see 426 of the parachute out the back, fingers crossed. 
So canopy, we'll show you that in a second. That's in the workshop. That's had the gel coat repairs done. Uh, it's now into the, the filler stage of it, if you like. So it's all being smoothed off. It looks so much better. So with the canopy as well, on top of the, uh, the cockpit up here, there's like a little, um, like a bathtub inside. And that's where the hinge fits in. So they're basically, they're rotten and they need replacing. So we're now looking for drawings for those to manufacture over the summer. So then we come back in for winter 2023, 24, we can then look at replacing the bathtubs and hopefully the hinges on the canopy. So this is phase one. Phase two, hopefully we get the parts over the summer. And then next winter, we'll change the parts over. So it's a little bit more slick. So that's the aircraft pretty much wrapped up for the update on the engineering of this part. Um, also, you know, you can see the building itself. There's still work going on in the hangar. Um, it's not finished by any means. So the guys are still here in a week, painting offices, putting wiring in, all that kind of stuff there. It comes at a cost still. The aircraft costs a lot of money as well. You've got to think of all these things, insurances, fuels, oils, greases, gases, um, but the hangar also, the electrics, um, electricity bills, all that kind of stuff all adds up. We need help with this. We really, really do. Um, so, you know, any support in that way would be really, really good. So the other bits we've got also um, is the ground equipment. So there's a massive amount of equipment that we have to use here to get the aircraft even moving with the, with the tug, um, to power it, the ground power units, to lift bits off a of racking, forklifts. You need lolas on forklifts, you need permits uh, for the cherry pickers, you need driving permits for the tugs, all that kind of stuff. So the tug at the moment is up on blocks. Um, so there was a bit of a problem with the rear, the rear brakes on that. They work really well. In fact, they wouldn't come off. They're now in the process of being fixed. Um, the forklifts had um, a new hub seal replaced on it. The Bowser's had tires replaced on it. So it all comes at a cost, but it's vital to keep this bit of kit going. And then you have to spend the money on keeping this bit of kit here going. So it all adds up, but we really need your help. Any donations, memberships, buying your merchandise, anything there is critical for us to keep us afloat and keep us alive, basically. If you want to see it moving, unfortunately, it costs money. Um, I know there's some people that say, well, why does it cost that much? Well, you know, you can see it right here, right now. So but the other things that are going on, we've got loads of events going on this year. We've got a Meet VRT Members Day. So if you're a member and you're seeing this, please come on down, come and get a cup of tea come and see the guys down here see the aeroplane have a good walk around have a chat it's yours come and see it it'll be good to see you so hopefully we'll see you then mm -hmm.